Violence begets violence basically means that violent behavior often causes violent behavior in return. For example, if somebody kills Jim's brother, just say in an unjust war, then Jim is much more likely to take up arms and seek revenge on his brother's attackers. Of course, if Jim goes out and kills the son of his brother's attacker, then that person will also wish to seek revenge. It's a vicious cycle that can be seen in many conflicts around the world. For example, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Spoiler warning. If you haven't already seen The Sopranos and Prison Break, the following contains spoilers. Last night, I had a terrible dream. I was with my four-year-old son and we were witness to a terrible murder. The person being murdered was a character from the series The Sopranos, Big Pussy Bon Pensiero. He was being garroted in the back of my car. Now, in the actual TV show, he wasn't actually garroted, but that's beside the point. The point is, I'm having terrible dreams involving terrible violence, and I think it is because I'm watching too much of it. Over the last few weeks, I've been on holidays and have been watching the entire series of The Sopranos, as well as the first season of Prison Break. I started watching season 2 and came across a scene in episode 2 where the character T-Bag forces a vet to reattach his hand at knife point. After a successful surgery, T-Bag thanks the doctor and then ties him down and kills him by lethal injection. I know it's just fiction, but I found this scene distressing to watch. I've since stopped watching Prison Break due to this unnecessary depiction of violence. It's funny, in Prison Break, I guess due to its rating and time slot, it didn't contain any swearing. But yet the producers and censors found it okay to depict the murder of a doctor who was forced to perform surgery. It's obscene, but is probably a good indicator of the current state of American society. Although I watched the entire series, I didn't actually like The Sopranos. I found the violence irritating, but for some reason couldn't stop watching. The main character, Tony, ends up killing his own nephew, Christopher. Not actually a nephew, but the cousin of his wife, by suffocating him after a car accident. Other murders depicted in the series were equally disturbing. I should also mention the real-life violence that occurred in America in 2016. If you haven't already heard, two African-American men, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling, were killed by police in controversial circumstances. This led to protests in Dallas, where Micah Xavier Johnson killed five police officers and injured seven others. Despite what many proponents say, I think that all this violence on TV and in video games is affecting us in a bad way. I'm starting to have nightmares because of it. It's not the first time that I've been affected. A few years ago, I played a lot of tabletop role-playing games, for example Dungeons & Dragons, with my mates. However, I started to suffer from similar symptoms due to the violent nature of most RPGs. Think about it. By allowing our children to grow up in a society where violence is all around us, even if it's fictional, it starts to normalise it. Sure, not everyone will go out and attack somebody after watching a YouTube video showing police brutality, but some people certainly will, as shown by last year's Dallas attack. I think we need to treat violence as the serious phenomenon that it is, not just something that we can use as entertainment for our children. I should never have watched those TV shows, and I certainly will be avoiding them in the future. It doesn't help that most news nowadays involves terrorism and murder. It's obviously a good way for the news networks to make money. As I've stated before, violence begets violence. Let's not raise our children to be numb to it. Let's put an end to this vicious cycle.